Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today, we are looking at one of the big forces shaping Australia's economy, our oil trade deficit, and how it links to global oil prices between the years of 2010 through to 2024. The Built to Power BI report bring the data to life and help us understand what's really going on. Okay, so what we're looking at here, guys, is what do the numbers show? So um, from 2010 to 2024, as we can see over the page here, you can look at our exports here uh, relative to our imports, okay? And you can see here, we've got a negative balance of trade as we go down the page here um, and up. So we can see that uh, Australia has consistently run an oil trade deficit, um, which you know, essentially means that we have um, imported more gas into the country uh, than we've exported uh, from the country to other nations. Um, and uh, the data over here shows here that our cumulative total shortfall is 371 billion Australian dollars. Uh, looking at the charts, we can see oil imports are consistently high, especially in years uh, when global crude prices spike, such as 2012, 2018, and 2022. So um, you can see here, crude oil is high here, um, here and over here quite high again. So um, you know, obviously this is going to drive up the balance of trade because it's going to be more expensive to uh, import, um, uh, import oil in this particular period of time um, relative to uh, in other periods where uh, you know, crude oil is much cheaper here. So you can sort of see that, um, you know, the balance of trade here is 12,000, uh, you know, negative 12,796. Uh, and then if we come down here to 22, it's negative 45,000. And if we look at the two different points here, the crude oil average price here is $41 versus $97. Okay. So um, that's something to sort of keep in mind here when we're looking at oil trade deficits. Um, exports, on the other hand, remain relatively small and volatile. Even in high price years, they never come close to offsetting uh, imports. Uh, in other words, Australia's imports, um, uh, imports far more oil than its exports, regardless of um, price conditions. So um, you know, this, is, this raises the question of, you know, if Australia is such an oil-rich nation, why is um, Australia's oil prices and the prices of pump are controlled uh, by OPEC, okay? So if we just want to come across the page here now, um, we can look at the oil, Australia's oil balance of trade by financial year, okay? The other page is calendar year. Uh, we can sort of see here that, you know, we have started here in 2015 to 16 with, you know, a balance of trade at negative um, 16,940. Uh, and then over here to negative 18373. Okay. And this figure here is a uh, dollars millions. So that's millions. Um, you know, thousands, millions makes up a billion. So, you know, that's an 18 billion deficit that year, and 16 billion that year, 14 billion here. Um, and then, you know, if we come down here post COVID, uh, when oil prices increased due to the war in the Ukraine, uh, we can see here that we're in a negative $44 billion um, dollar trade uh, deficit there with oil with it throughout that period, $43 billion here, okay? We can look at exports here by financial year and imports. The story is pretty clear here that, you know, imports well exceeds um, exports. And then as a, as a result, we have a large cumulative shortfall Okay, so some of you guys are probably thinking, you know, so what? What does all this mean? Um, this demonstrates that Australia's oil deficit is structural, not temporary. Even when oil prices collapsed in 2020, over here, we can see that the oil price crashed or collapsed during COVID at 41.26 average for the year. Um, deficit still 
remained for Australia through this period. As we can see here, we still had a well a twelve billion dollar deficit in that period, um, and then this essentially means our economy is heavily exposed to global oil price volatility. Um, when oil prices rise, the problem is um, households and businesses feel the squeeze at the pump. So if you're a small business, say you're a trucking company, for example, um, you know, you're doing sort of, um, you know, say you have a ride share business or whatever it is, you know, all those businesses are heavily uh, affected by um, prices at the pump, increases business uh, operating expenses, etc. Or if you're just an individual uh, looking to sort of try and you and you've got a big commute to work and you do a lot of driving, price at the pump um, can sort of affect uh, your uh, cash flow. So um, basically, um, you know, this it also increases our, our trade deficit when uh, petrol prices increase at the pump. When prices fall at the pump, it provides temporary relief. The underlying reliance on imports still doesn't go away. Okay, so the question, the sort of the answer, sort of here is, you know, to look into um, either. There's a few sort of things to take into consideration here. We can, as a country, look to um, produce more oil on the domestic market, or we can look into uh, other avenues such as um, you know diversifying energy sources bringing in more electric vehicles including renewables and electrification um, but for policymakers uh, what we're highlighting here is the importance of energy security Australia has limited refining capacity and relies heavily on imported crude and refined products as per the data to reduce exposure, there are a few options. Invest in local refining and storage capacity. Diversify energy sources, as mentioned before, including renewables and electrification, or build stronger trade and supply partnerships to safeguard against global shocks. Okay, so that might be you know, trying to form new relationships uh, with other countries that, you know, uh, potentially be outside uh, OPEC. Uh, for businesses and consumers, it means fuel prices and by extension, transport and logistic costs uh, will continue to be shaped by global oil markets rather than domestic production. In summary today, the data tells us that Australia's oil trade deficit is large, consistent and highly sensitive to global oil prices. It's not just an economic statistic. It has real implications for energy security, cost of living, and the long-term transition of our energy system. Thanks for watching today. If you found this analysis useful, please like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments. Should Australia try to rebuild local refining capacity, or should we move faster into renewables to break this import dependence? Love to hear what you think. Peace.